42, welcome back. More than a year after a beloved grandmother was killed in a carjacking in broad daylight. Today, the trial of the final remaining defendant will begin. John Honore has pleaded not guilty to second degree murder. And this morning, we're getting analysis from the trial from Dr. Ashraf Ismail. Am I, did I say that right? Yes. Okay, I want to make sure I said that right. Dillard University Criminal Justice Program, uh, the director also for the Center for Racial Justice. Obviously, this is a big case. It's been very emotional. A lot of people have been following along, and today is such a big day. We were talking about it um, a little bit here with this continuing coverage of this trial. There's three defendants who've already pled. They are now uh, sentenced to 20 years. And it was sort of the three defendants who, when you watch the video and you see the evidence, seem to not be as in. They were involved, certainly, and hold guilt, but they were not as directly as involved in the death of Linda Fricke as this last suspect seems to be, mm -hmm. John Honoré, who's charged in this. Mm -hmm. But yet he's taking this to trial. Did that shock you? I think it's shocking to everybody because when you watch the video, it was clear what he was engaged in, the level of violence he was engaged in, um, in the. Uh, 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 and, and again, the, the extent of it mm -hmm. as well. And so I guess one has the question as to what the argument is in terms of his defense mm -hmm. and not taking the plea deal as the other three did in terms of manslaughter, which would be to me the best possible scenario in this case. And for him, if, if he goes to trial, well, he is going to trial and obviously that starts today. Um, and we kind of talked about it too, what, what attorney would take this on seeing what's laid out in front of them mm -hmm. unless they do have something in their back pocket that we're just really not aware of, which it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine. I mean, the only thing you could probably, you know, you know, again, it has to be a lot of documentation of this is mental health, a right state of mind. Mm -hmm. But even, you know, that argument is, you know, very minuscule in terms of convincing a jury that that was the case involved and then being able to get off completely mm -hmm. uh, from the case as well. And we know that the other three who did take this plea deal, the family has been very vocal about how they feel about this case and, and what happened to their family member. Um, you know, they said that they did appreciate that there was some level of, uh, you know, guilt that they took account for. But in the case of John Honore, the family has said on camera that they want him to get the full extent of the law, give him no mercy, like he showed their own family member, Linda Fricke, is what they said. Um, do you think there is some element of justice that was served here with the three taking the plea deal? There was some element of justice, and then, you know, there's this whole concept of criminal justice, of restorative justice, which mm -hmm. talks about accountability and repair and working with the, the victims, working with the assailants. And in this case, the family was very open in, of working with that and taking the plea deal of manslaughter, and they were accepting of it. I mean, they knew they had to do their time, but it's, it's not as bad, obviously, second-degree murder, which, you know, takes a life sentence mm -hmm. from that. And uh, sometimes very difficult for families to be able to repair with that because it was a very beloved family member. And when you watch the video, it, it's horrific. It, it was horrific, mm -hmm. what you were, you were watching. So you have to kind of give, um, you know, the family their kudos in terms of, again, they're hurting. Oh, but, yes. Yeah, they're hurting and grieving, but then again, accepting the forgiveness and allowing them to take the accountability. Mm -hmm. And those three young ladies taking the accountability and accepting what they've done and hopefully over their 20 year sentence can, um, you know, recount of what they did and, and learn from that and hopefully come back and into society and engage in, in as productive citizens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I, I couldn't agree mm -hmm. more. I mm -hmm. can't imagine if I was a family member in that place. That's what you hope you would respond mm -hmm. by. But it's difficult, um, very, very difficult, I especially, can't, especially yeah. after what we saw. Absolutely. Uh, it would be very hard to come to terms but with that. But in this case, I, I think the when you watch the video, I think these young ladies were involved. You know, they, they wanted the car, but I don't think they wanted to show any harm. Mm -hmm. You know, everything was happening so fast, but you can see very clearly from the video who was inflicting the harm. I think right. the others were just there. As we see, New Orleans, a lot of carjacking mm -hmm. and auto thefts. You know, they just wanted the car, and I'm sure to take off, you mm -hmm. know, with that. I don't think the intent, I guess just, you know, just from watching, and I think the family felt that as well to, to hurt um, Linda, but uh, it was very clear from the, the video that the, uh, you know, um, the person that's wanting to plead not guilty, John, you know, um, he was very aggressive and it seemed like very intent in his violent behavior. Right. Very Ag intentful. Agreed. And, that, and that's just speaking on what you see from the video. I yeah. think most people would agree. Yeah. Uh, opening statements today. I mean, what can we expect from just the beginning of this trial? Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, the defense uh, and the prosecution, I think, very has a very clear opening statement as to what went on and, and, and clear evidence as to what went on. And I guess we're waiting to see this morning what exactly the defense is going to argue uh, from this, not only was the carjacking, the beating, the pulling her out, pulling her clothes off, right. or running over. I mean, that was very, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, when you think about second degree, you know, you think about the intent of the violence, and he seemed to be very intent. This is what he was trying to accomplish. He wasn't just mm -hmm. like move out the way, let me get the car and get away. Right. I mean, he was, you know, engaged in very aggressive violence. It'll and, be interesting and almost intent to, to murder. So it'll be interesting to see what argument, because 
uh, feasibly, we can't think about an argument. What argument does the defense have other than, you know, he's been under mental health state for, for eight or nine years. So he's not in his right state of mind. And that has to be significant evidence there from a psychological point of view that um, uh, with this type of evidence, mm -hmm. that's the only defense I can think of. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Certainly, yeah. I think a lot of people will be paying attention, especially yeah. now that he is taking this to trial. Dr. Or Ishmael, thank you so much for being with us. Mm -hmm. We appreciate your insight. And we'll continue in coverage of the trial of John Honoré here in WWL Louisiana, as well as on our website and mobile apps. Even our Leah McNeil has been live all morning. She'll continue to be from the court there, the criminal court, again, starting at 7 o'clock over on WPL.